Steele, who is the um, president of the Cultural Arts Society. She is our chair, our current chairman, but she is out today. She is um, not feeling well, so I'll just go ahead and, and run the meeting for right now. But um, we do have a quorum. We have six, so that constitutes a quorum. Number three on your agenda is approval of the November 10th minutes. If I can get a motion to approve those minutes. Carolyn made a motion. Second. Got a second. Before we begin any other business, I'd like us to go around the table and um, so who we are and a little bit about what we do because we do have some new members and get you guys um, familiar with each other. Good morning, my name is Kathleen Wolfcott. Um, I work at Seascape Resort as a Seascape uh, Wedding and Special Events Manager. I've been there nearly three years. I've uh, lived in Wilson County for 15 years now. I'm not that I can live anywhere else. And um, I'm going to do the pleasure to be here today. Um, I'm Allison Graff, the health studio in Brighton Beach. Um, this is the 2012 Artist of the Year. And with my just And just happy to be here. I've been here about 12 years. Allison did this beautiful piece on the wall here for our commission piece. And um, we made that box, had, had it specially made where we could take that piece out. And so when we go out of the market, we do different functions. Sometimes we bring um, fashion designers with us, and they'll wear that piece on their little runway. So we are very happy with that. And anybody else who wants to come to us up together? Okay. okay. Um, I'll look for that. Okay. Uh, good morning. My name is Kelly Sadler. I work for Alice Beach. Um, I have um, about the past 10 years. I have the director of events there. So weddings, events, all that fall under me. Um, and I have worked here in Hall County since 2002. My name is Jenny Kyle. I'm actually new to the area. Uh, coming out here a couple of years for vacations and whatnot. So uh, we moved here in August full time to Great Beach at Golf Trace. So right around the corner from here. Uh, I took a job with Morgan Stanley out in Destin. Uh, so but we've lived pretty much all over the I've lived all over the world pretty much. So it's kind of exciting to actually have a home to finally come home to and our kitchen is cool to stay. Speaking of weddings, my fiance is in the crowd right now, so he's seen looking at him just because you know. <laughs> So very happy to be here, and uh, so social joy, uh, social support, and getting involved in the community and getting that in. So thank you for serving. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Shelby Schuler. I'm the director of sales with St. Joe Resorts. We have a watercolor in a resort and a pearl hotel, as well as a variety of vacation rentals. I have the sales and events and weddings team, as well as the business development team. Uh, that I work with. I have been working in the hospitality industry for Walton County for maybe over 15 months. <laughs> I've been here for 16, I don't know. Um, and I moved back to the area. Part of that time I was living in Connecticut and representing this area while I was in Connecticut. But um, I've been back in the area since about 2008, I believe. This is definitely home for me. Awesome. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sammy Sanchez. I'm the fire marshal for the South Pole Fire District. I've been with them for 18 years. Um, I'm on this committee because I help ensure that all these events that go through are, from a life safety perspective, you know, meet, meet code and requirements and uh, ensure that everybody has a good time but a safe time. Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> we need that guy. Emily Sia with the TBC. Um, I'm a sales coordinator and I've been sending you guys all the emails, making sure you guys are in the tent. Hey there, I'm Kelly Carter. I'm marketing coordinator for here at um, Business South Walton. Um, I take care of the events program that you guys um, are so happy about. I also take care of many of the uh, media, uh, media buys, that sort of thing. I work hand in hand with the agency and I take care of the co op program. Just pretty much anything that's full on marketing and out. Out of the year, out of uh, out of home marketing, I take care of along with the agency, and I'm Kelly Jalon, our director of marketing communications. And I'm Pamela Watkins, I'm director of sales, special events, and over the visitor center. 
and I think Carly and Alicia. And just to give you a, a, a little history, I've been with the TDC going on 19 years, a long time. Carly has been with the TDC for <coughs> 10. Uh, Alicia going on nine, nine months. Yes. And Kelly, 10 years. So you have a lot of history here of, of people that have worked here. And I would like to introduce a, a new staff member that we have, Gayla Schaefer. Gayla, Gayla is our community relations coordinator. Um, and she replaces Angela, but she is her own person. And so, we, we, you know, you always say, oh, the new girl, or, you know, who, who they replace. But she's been with us, is this your third week? Uh, this is the third week. Or fourth week? Fifth week. Fifth, oh, all right. Okay, she's fitting right in. So we are happy to have her. Uh, number five. Oh, no, no. Let's go back to number four. Election of chairman and vice chair. Would anyone like to step up and volunteer to be the chair, or would you like to nominate someone to be the chair? I nominate Jennifer Steele. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to mention that Jennifer Steele and Pam Avery are not here today. Jennifer is uh, the head of the Cultural Arts uh, Association, and then Pam Avery works at Seaside, but she also sits on our TDC council, and she could not be here today. Um, so Sammy has nominated Jennifer Steele to stay on as chair. Um, can I get a motion for that, or a second for that? Second. Okay. You got that, Alicia? Yes. Okay. Vice chair. Make sure she has. Oh, you got you got a, you got a, oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing this right. Okay, so can, I, can I get a, a vote for Jennifer Steele as chairman? Everyone say aye. Uh, aye. Okay. Okay. Nomination on the floor for Shelby. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone in favor? Aye. Uh, Anyone opposed? We haven't had a meeting in a while. <laughs> okay, so we have Jennifer Steele and Shelby Schuler. Okay. Moving on to number five, Sunshine Law Training. We did have this uh, scheduled with our county attorney, Clay Atkinson, and uh, something came up at the last minute. Uh, there is the possibility that he will be able to do this at the end of our session. I have my phone here. I'm waiting for a text from him. Uh, he's in Fort Walton, so it could be that if the judge lets him go, he can he can make it here in time. If not, we will reschedule uh, the Sunshine Law training. We have a few other people from the other committees, and we also have our TDC council that needs uh, Sunshine Law training. So we'll send you the date if you don't do it today. In your packet for number seven um, is the code of conduct, and if you have read that completely, um, you can <coughs> sign that and send that down uh, the table to Alicia by the end of the, the meeting. So it's a one pager back in front. It just goes over, you know, committee etiquette and. Uh, When you can't be here, notifying the executive director of the staff liaison. It's pretty simple. Also in your packet is the um, written Sunshine Law rules. So I, I know you'd love to read through this and um, get familiar with that. Any questions about the code of contact? Everybody good with that? Number seven is the sponsorship activities update. And Kelly's going to give us that update. Okay. Good morning. Apologize. I sound a little sick. Not much anymore. <laughs> but um, so these events were all approved last uh, June by the um, first recommended by you all, and then recommended to the TDC and the BCC for approval. We approved um, $505,000 worth of funding. At 
this point, we've expended, with the events that have happened, we've expended approximately $193,000 of that $505,000 that we put out. That's the cash basis money. And so we have our remaining $312,000 to put out there. Um, we have a lot of events coming up, guys. Um, February, March, and April tend to be event season. And um, there's pretty much not anyone in this room that's not touched by that right now. So um, the, the events that we've had since we've met have been um, some good ones. Um, Every Christmas Story Ever Told, we sponsor that at just a small level, just, you know, just, um, and it's an experience event, something to do when you're here. Um, we, uh, that event was sponsored at the $5,000 level, and um, they were able to do a lot of things with that money and able to see a lot of people come into um, maybe that wouldn't have known about it as well. 3810K um, also happened. It was, um, it, it was a $9,000 event. Um, the one that I get a lot of grief about is the, uh, the Hilton Sandusten Beach basketball blowout. It does happen at Freeport High School. That seems a little odd that we sponsor something that happens at Freeport High School. However, um, anyone that has been to the embassy, the Ventura Marriott's, have been uh, to the Hilton during the week between Christmas and New Year's realizes it's nothing but a bunch of basketball players, ladies and men, or girls and guys. And um, I don't have their room nights this year, but last year they had 999, or almost 1,000 room nights between the four hotels for that time frame. So um, for our little $9,000 investment into that, it's a very good return on investment for Marriott's, the um, Hilton, and the Embassy. Um, and what we do with that to try to do, uh, it, this one just tends to get, um, a lot of people don't understand that events, that's why I always take a little time to explain it just a little bit better, especially for you, New York people on the committee. Um, what happens with that event is we give them information about the area and you know, tell them where to go to eat, where to go shop, and what we're trying to do is turn them into a leisure visitor, Sim similar to what the sales team does when they go out and meet with meeting planners and stuff. You don't down here for an event or something, and then that you can get their family and turn them into a leisure visitor. Um, just two weeks ago, it was like it was last week, um, we had the 30 Day Songwriters Festival in town. Um, as many of you know, it was completely sold out before, um, before almost two weeks before the event. So I wish Jennifer was here; she could actually be better numbers than I can. But um, talk, uh, speaking with Jennifer Steele and with Stacy Brady at the Grand Boulevard event, that uh, that venue will hold approximately 4,500 people, and um, they felt like they had around 4,000 there on the Saturday and the Sunday. So. It went really well. In conjunction with that, just to give you guys a heads up, um, the marketing and communications team also hosted Southern Living that week. Um, we had Southern Living in town for um, for uh, a buy that we did. Uh, I'll, we did with Southern Living. We did the bucket list of visits for South Walton. I'll get you all a copy of that so that I can provide that so you'll understand what I'm talking about. But. Um, it's in the February issue of uh, South Walton. They chose just a couple other places to do your bucket list, and South Walton was one of them, and we worked together with them. We also produced, um, with the festival as a backdrop, we produced five um, videos. Allison Craft was a part of those videos. Um, we uh, shot at watercolor, at Fish Out of Water. We also interviewed Chef Todd Rogers, and we did a lot of... Um, it was more about the, it wasn't so much about the festival. The festival was just the backdrop of what was going on and um, how uh, South Walton is not just a destination, it's a lifestyle. And each of our videos had a different lifestyle that went with it. Um, one of them was talking about the 38 Yellow Love lifestyle that people um, seem to love, uh, talking about all the artists that we had in the community. We had um, Jesse Gaffrey. He, um, did an interview for us and some from some of his work at Fish Out of Water. Allison talked about her work, about how it feels, how it is being an artist in South Walton. We had musicians, Chris Alvarado, um, Forrest Williams and the Forrest Williams Band. We had Danica Lowry. They all did interviews. Um, Danica talked about being healthy in South Walton and she um, 
in her video, she also did some yoga and some paddle boarding. And um, we, there's five very different videos, but they will be coming out and we will share them with everyone as soon as they're available. But it was all based upon events, activities, Yonge Beach, everything that this committee is about. So it was really showcasing the lifestyle. So we did that in conjunction with the 38 Songwriters Festival. So it's completely the backdrop of um, the videos, but you'll get to see a lot of South Walton in those. And when that's ready, we'll put those out. So we did that on with the 38 Songwriters Festival. So that was a big week, and we appreciate everyone that helped out. There was a lot of um, a lot of ins and outs. I mean, we snuck in at Alice Beach, and we know that Kelly realized that we snuck in and snuck out. Um, but there was just a lot of things that we tried to do with that and try to make it fully um, comprehensive with South Walton. So we did that. We do a lot of things in conjunction with events, so keep that in mind when you're looking at, you know, um, what events we want to sponsor coming up. Um, a lot of times, depending on what media want to come, and it's not just leisure media, it's also um, whether Pamela has meetings or weddings media, we like to do that in conjunction with an event so that there's other things because we all know we don't want one person, one more person here June and July, but if we can fill up September, October, November, December, January, February, then that would be great. So we really promote that a lot, so we work around it. That's why these events are so important to make sure that, you know, um, everyone's on the same page and everyone's working so hard. But coming up, um, not coming up next weekend, we have um, the Gumbo Festival. And the Gumbo Festival is an interesting one to me because this is coming up. I wanted to, I'm, I'm going away from the, um, the script just a little bit, but, um, you know, you really don't think of um, the Gumbo Festival as having a large impact or anything like that. But when you look at, um, we only sponsor that at, a, um, we sponsor that at a very small $7,000. This, this committee talked about it and thought it was important. We sponsor that at a $7,000 level. And the median income for those people that came was around $98,000. But um, the return on investment for that was the economic, the total economic was $242,000. So for our small $7,000 um, sponsorship there, special event marketing grant, so it was, you know, um, no, I'm sorry, I heard that wrong. Seven hundred and ninety-one thousand dollars. So for seven thousand and the and the total economic, the total estimate, estimated economic impact is seven hundred and ninety-one thousand dollars. You can really see how this program works really well to pour money back into um, South Walton. So or there was twenty, there was twenty-two hundred attendees, but direct spending, ticket sales, food, and everything was almost um, a half, was almost half a million dollars there. So when you look at that, you can really see why this is important that we do our due diligence. And um, when I ask you guys to attend things, that you really attend them and you know come back and let me know what's going on. So coming up, as next weekend, we have the Gumbo Festival. And then um, Why Women and Shoes, South Walton. Um, it is now a signature event here in South Walton. It's over three days. It happens at Hilton and in various other locations because they have some dinner dinners. Um, and that's also something that uh, Pamela's team supports outside of South Walton, which I think is important that we support it. Our, we support ours in South Walton, and then Pamela goes out, and there's sister events that happen. And We've done Nashville, Fort Worth, Houston. We're going to Nashville again this month to participate in that Wine, Women, and Shoes. Um, we are the only travel destination at any of these events. They normally have, you know, they have 10 partners, but they normally have jewelry and shoes and wine, of course, um, but we're the only travel uh, entity at these events. So it just makes it just makes sense that we continue to support our local wine, women, and shoes on a good level. And then Pamela's also, because a lot of these people, I mean, people travel to these things and maybe they go to more than one and so they start looking for South Walton and really realize that, you know, we're the destination they're interested in. Um, beyond that, big, big weekend for um, the half marathon, you know, it, it's it's a busy weekend in, in Seaside and um, those of you that aren't aware, um, Emerald is coming back for Taste of the Race, so if you don't have your tickets for um, that, I would suggest getting them, um, just because if you really want to go, uh, I would suggest getting those tickets now. They're trying to sell out for that Friday night event. Uh, Kelly's got her event coming up, 38 Wine Festival. Um, 
that is actually one of my favorite events that I like to talk about. Um, me, um, hey Kelly. Well, I, going back to that research, while it's a small event, and Kelly, I understand y'all like to keep it small because of the type of event it is, and that you're trying to keep it that way. While it only had 524 attendees approximately, um, the when you look at the household income for those attendees, it's right there where we want that household income to be, $161,000. So um, while it didn't have as many room nights generated as say a St. Destin Wine Festival, when you look at the difference in the room in the um, medium household income, it's definitely the people that we want to see. So, you know, sometimes you don't need to have 5,000 people. It can be just 500 of the right people. So keep that in mind when you're looking at, you know, as we're with the new application going live and everybody putting in their stuff, 500 of the right people sometimes is better than 5,000 of everyone. So, but moving from there, um, so we have the San Wine Festival, as I said, the Destin Charity Wine Auction, and then um, South Walton Beach's Wine and Food Festival. And then the new event, which is um, South Walton Film Food Film Festival, which is in conjunction with the local palette. Um, it's going to be very interesting, and um, it, it, it'll have a lot of things going on with that. Um, I hope to see a lot of people attend it as well. Um, if you have a moment, when you look in um, your, the other piece that I provided to you, the economic, the estimated economic impact of events for um, this was February 2015 through March 2015. I felt it was important to give you this one because when you look at the number of events in February and March, and then we also have some for April as well, um, this is when the bulk of our events take place. So um, it seems like October has a lot of events. It does. It just feels like they're all there. There, October seems to be very, very full of events, but then you have just as many events spread out through the February, March, April time frame. So. Looking at that, um, I think our um, research agency does a pretty good job, job of having, we actually have people there, for those of you who have never seen the research agency or haven't had any, um, haven't had any contact with them, um, I work with them and they're, they're, um, they're South Walton. They, they come over from Tallahassee where our research agency is based out of and they were lanyards, they have an iPad, they're, they're usually intern girls. Um, they, they go up and they actually talk to the visitor and act. it's very informal and basically they just ask them a couple questions. If they don't want to answer, we go on. We're not, we don't, we're not intrusive, we're not anything. But if we ask if we can have, um, if we have researchers there, we would really like to do that. Um, it, it does give us some good, um, it, it does give us good information to come back and say why this program is important. Um, one of the reasons that this program is so important is it's not just the $505,000 that we give out in cash, it's also the additional approximately $500,000 that we do as would be in kind. But we also promote these, uh, the signature events, we promote them through NPR radio, we promote them through Hulu, we promote them on Pandora, we promote them on various channels online. Um, we know a, a lot of different online places and then we also um, we do the NPR, we do online, and then we give that, that stuff back. And if you want to use that, what we created for your ad, you're welcome to use that. So it creates these different banner ads that maybe if, if you're a smaller event, you don't have an out speech or a watercolor behind your event that has the graphic designer that can, or the person that can do that, it does give that back to you for you able to use that. Um, we also promote them through all of everything that we do. Not, pretty much anywhere anyone goes outside of this market, whether it's Pamela with um, leisure, Pamela with sales, she always has something to say that these are the events are going on in their sales kit and our media kit. It's always there online. So that's why it's important, you know, that we that we support these events and everyone um, continues to do their part. Um, some of them are a little bit harder to uh, talk about because obviously if you're a higher demographic you might not want to talk about how much you pay for your room. You might want to not want to talk about you know, what your household income is. So we, we do, you know, realize that you know everybody's not always truthful. So there is a little there, there's a little wiggle room there. But for the most part, um, I think it's a good program and um, we've expanded it a little bit. 
um, working with Carly's program in the north. We're going to have some researchers there for some of her events because she also has an events program in the north that supports some of the um, events that happen in um, northern Walton County. So um, it, it's not just about heads and beds, it is about the community relations and the relationships that we form together because as long as there's events going on, that puts the heads and the beds that we need. So. And just to um, take a step back for those of you that are new, the TDC's fiscal year runs October to September. So right now, the events that Kelly is, is talking about is in this fiscal year. Um, and she mentioned that we have a few more to do. Um, we don't try to get events in June, July, or the beginning of August because summer takes care of itself. That's when the people are coming down here. Um, so as we go to this next section of the um, actually the, the sponsorship grant we'll talk more about that but just so you know that this research is based on uh, on last year and as kelly mentioned we have a north walton events committee um, their goal is to create activities up there that residents in south walton would want to go up there and attend and also that our visitors would want to attend uh, last weekend was Chautauqua Assembly, which was wonderful. It's a four-day event. Uh, they have keynote speakers, and they have different sessions all day long. In April, it's April 12th, probably, Marvel of Flight uh, at the airport. This will be the seventh year for Marvel in Flight. And although they don't have as large a budget as this half million dollars down here in the South End, they have a $30,000 budget. We have four, we have four events for, for North Walton five events for that 30,000. Um, so the, the goal for the South Walton activities is heads and beds, because we do uh, collect that 4% bed tax and that's how we're funded. So it is all about the, the heads and beds. And this economic um, report, we pick uh, certain events to have these uh, the research firm. It's Kerr and St. Germain out of Tallahassee. And so they come down, and, and like Kelly said, they, they have the interns. And um, in the north end, we're going to have research done in Marvel Flight. So we're kind of excited to see what, what those um, stats will, will reveal. But I just wanted to give you an overview. And then, Kelly, if you can make a list, especially for the new folks, a list of the activities for um, this fiscal year that we're in so that, so that they have that. But, um, Kelly's going to talk about the changes that we have made to the 2017. When I say 2017 application, it really starts October 1st of 2016 and runs through September 30th of 2017. So I know 2017 sounds like a long ways away, but it's really not when you're working on projects like this. Um, I just lost it. Um, Oh, yes. The application is now out on the street. It went out uh, last week, so uh, January 28th. It closes April 7th. So, you know, if you know people uh, that have activities that are not on our, our main list, be our ambassador and encourage them to, you know, fill that out. But Kelly's going to take you through the changes uh, that we've made for the 2017 fiscal year in this next section here. So we're trying to keep everything highlighted in yellow that we changed. Um, there was a lot of feedback for the last two years that we've been doing this. And um, there was a lot of feedback in the last two years that this committee's been scoring these applications. And I, I realize it's a lot of work and I sincerely I, staff, everyone here, we sincerely appreciate all the hard work that you all put into this and that you continue to put into this. Um, the biggest thing that you know, we heard from based on some of the discussion last year was it was hard to score some of the stuff that you know you guys weren't aware of as far as you know you don't know when reports are submitted and some of that stuff. So we tried to really look at that and we tried to also really look at things that maybe um, Maybe it's something because Carly and I do it every day. We completely understand what we're talking about. 
but sometimes, you know, um, others might not understand it as well. Um, basically, I try to kind of keep, a, Carly and I kind of work together to keep a running list of where were the questions were, like, it says this, but what does that really mean? And where we were having to put our heads together to be like, well, it says you can do this, but I don't really understand how you can do this. So um, we worked hard, I have to say. Um, it was a lot of struggle trying to get everybody on the same page just to make sure that I understand marketing and most of you understand marketing, Carly understands marketing, but maybe if you're a small event like Every Christmas Story Ever Told or Carly's Marvel of Flight, they're not marketers. So it, we needed to make sure that it was all um, terms everyone could understand. And the so, workshop helped a lot too. Yes, and we will continue. We will do that workshop again this year for everyone that attends just to help make it um, more understandable and exactly what we're talking about. Um, so um, first of all, I want to open with you continuously hear myself and Carly say it is a reimbursable program. And we did make a change in here where in the past it was reimbursable after the event. Now it is reimbursable before the event if you can show you did the work. It's not, I think that's where a little um, confusion from last year we talked about. You can ask for your money before the event happens, but you had to have done the work. So if you had an ad that ran in Atlanta Magazine and it's already run and you paid the bill and you have the invoice for it, you can submit that for reimbursement. You can't submit what you're going to do for reimbursement. I think that was a little, I think um, I tried to make that much plainer in here and through the workshop we'll make that as plain as well because it's still not the program where we write you a $10,000 check and we ask you to just do what you would like with it. Um, and one of the things that, you know, it, on my and Carly's end and Pamela and John, you know, Carly and I put the information together and submit it for reimbursement and it has to go to John and Pamela. Obviously, they have to sign off on it before it goes to finance. But that's not the end all be all. It goes from here, it goes from their office, then it goes to our director of administration, which is upstairs, and they have to do their stuff. Then it goes to county finance and the FENIAC, and it's really got to be very plain as to what you did. So when Carly and I are talking to you, and it just be me mostly for down here, but if I'm not here, then Carly is your go-to person. When we're like, you could do that. However, if you spend your money this way, I know there will not be any problems having that reimbursed. Um, and that's the thing that we want you guys to get out as ambassadors of the program because it's really for traditional media placement. And when you start um, looking in that gray area, trying to figure out how to make it work back and forth, that's when we get into a little trouble and that's when it holds up, you know, being funded. There are some, um, there are some people in, um, that have applied for grants that um, are happy with the program because they don't understand the program. And so if you guys understand the program, when you hear this, you can help them understand that it's it is a reimbursable program it doesn't have to be after you have the event but it does have to be after you've done the work because we we are at the end of the day um while it's not your apple alarm taxes it is still public money and um we're subject to anything else that's subject to public money so that's kind of where i wanted to start with that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when we talk about that um, just to talk about the program overall for some of the new people, you know, a signature event is an event that is more than is three days or more. It's going to have significant impact on um, should have significant multiple um, room nights, heads and beds, and typically happens in more than one neighborhood. It doesn't have to. Some things are all in one neighborhood, but they could go throughout multiple neighborhoods, something like a 38 Song Riders Festival is throughout multiple neighborhoods. But South Walton Beach's Wine and Food Festival all happens at Grand Boulevard. A digital graffiti all happens at Alice Beach. Um, so it can still be in one neighborhood, but typically heads and beds spill into other neighborhoods. I mean, um, digital graffiti can't handle that many room nights all in Alice Beach. So obviously it's going to spill over the neighboring community, the neighboring communities so that it has that. 
An experience event is a little different. Um, an experience event is going to be um, that event like a gumbo festival. You may make plans to come do that, but you may get to stay invested and find out it's going on and go buy your $30 ticket that day to go. They're going to receive $10,000 or less, and it's only going to be a one-day event. Now, there are some events that are more than one day that are experience events, but there will never be a one-day signature event. So, you know, it, it might be a smaller event that happens multiple days. This is the first year that 38 Wine Festival is a signature event. It's always been an experience event in the past, but um, we felt that with the um, household income and the number of people they're bringing in and the type of event it is, that it warranted to be a signature event. So those are some of the things that you look at. Um, also keep in mind a signature event is the economic impact that's going to be significant and you make your you don't show up three days before digital graffiti and go buy a ticket. You you look at you're looking in January, reminding your husband, your significant other, your dog, whoever it is you're gonna take you, or you're home by yourself, um, that we need to get tickets to this. There's been significant marketing done to get people interested in that. Whereas an experience event, you may look at it and be like, oh, we're here, this is something we can go do. So kind of keep in mind. But again, there are smaller experience events that you could potentially, you know, make plans to come. I, I feel like a Baytown Wharf Beer Festival is something that a millennial in that age bracket, they make plans to come to that. Whereas um, it's, it's only a one day event, whereas maybe they might not make plans to come to a South Walton Beaches Wine and Food Festival. We're really trying to look at that um, age bracket and do that kind of thing because um, remember our age group is 35 and up, so women, millennials are starting to touch that these days. And millennials don't make plans. So <laughs> they're a, they're a, we, need, we need them. We need them, but they're a, they have a wait and see attitude. So um, that would be one of the things that I would talk about. So um, on page two, for the most part, you're, you're no, nothing changed in the guidelines on page, on page two, nothing changed in the overall guidelines. But how about, you know, keep in mind that it's got to be in Walton County. If there is a portion of it outside of Walton County, um, allowances are made, but none of our money can be spent on promoting that portion of it outside of Walton County. If you do institutional advertising and one fourth of it is outside of Walton County, I will do a prorated thing. Uh, we do a prorated um, reimbursement program, whereas we don't pay for one fourth of that <coughs> advertising because one fourth of that advertising was advertising somewhere other than here. It, it's just really how we look at that um, because at the end of the day, it's Walton County tax, um, TDT tax, and we are um, we have to spend it on things that happen in Walton County. So that all kind of stays the same. So when you move to page three, it talks about authorized use of funds. This is where we have a lot of, everybody just wants to go all willy-nilly and say, I can spend money however I want. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> um, so it's advertising and promotional expenses in out-of-market media. So when I say out-of-market, that's outside of Okaloosa, Walton, and Bay County for South Walton's program. Um, and it has to be, we get a lot of things like say, um, Emerald Coast Magazine, I won't let you, you're like, well, it goes into Pensacola. It's predominantly, you've got to really show us your, um, if, if it's a magazine that we're unfamiliar with, um, you come to me and you're like, I want to have a, um, I want to place an ad here, I'm going to ask for the media kit to go with that um, publication because I'm going to want to know what that circulation is, who they are. I want to know about that publication before I say, yeah, it's okay to um, spend our funds on that as a reimbursable. So my biggest thing is ask. I would always rather tell you no up front than tell you no at the end after you spent the money. Kelly Siler will tell you I'm good at saying no. Yes, if you don't get that approved ahead of time before you do that, and then you send it to either one of them, and it's not approved, that's just money that you have spent. And I probably for a good cause, you just won't get reimbursed for it. And I don't have any way around that. There's no, like, I can't, I, it's, it's, not, it's not me making the decision. It's, it's above my head, so I, I really have to stick to it. So um, even if you have to send me 25 emails, <laughs> to get it done. <laughs> Kelly and I have been working a lot this week and I've been out sick, so we've got a lot of emails going back and forth. But um, 
I would rather have 25 emails and know that what you're going to submit on the back end so that I can just write you a $10,000 check and be done. And I'll have to come back to you 10 times to try to find $6,000 that you spent that is um, not reimbursable. So um, that's the biggest thing there is just ask before you do it and I'll, I'll be truthful. I'll, I'll tell you, no, we can't score that. So um, with an experience event, you can't spend um, more than $5,000 on um, promotional merchandise and promotional merchandise. If you do decide to buy, if you do have a $10,000 grant and um, you decide to spend $5,000 of that on t-shirts, you can't then sell those t-shirts because you can't then make a profit off of the money that we just given you. So your volunteers could wear those or you could just give them to your attendees. You know, and, and that helps your cause for the next year. Yeah, I do, you but you can't sell them. And that's one of the biggest things that um, comes back that when I get those t-shirts, um, when I get those t-shirt invoices and maybe I've sent you to the event or I've sent Carly or Gayla or whoever, and they come back and they're like, yeah, I bought this t-shirt. <laughs> and then when I get the invoice, I'm like, um, no, that's not, I, can't, I know I can't pay for it if you went ahead and done that. So there, there's some things there. Um, and that's, and I'm not saying that's the reason that we send you guys to that kind of thing, but <laughs> it is, <laughs> it's not, but it is um, one of those things that, you know, you, you're looking for, you know, just to make sure that everything is being done like it's supposed to. And, and we want you to come back on that evaluation, because we do have a written evaluation, with you know, your positives and your negatives. And we do want you to be critical because then that information is filtered to Kelly and then Kelly and, and Carly and Carly and Kelly have meetings then with like Kelly Seiler and they go over, you know, the negatives and the positives. And so that's you're anonymous. Better next time. Yeah. We're, you're not you're anonymous. anonymous. Yeah. I can pop like, okay, so I ask you to give me um, three things we call it three ups and three downs. So the three things that you think should be sustained to continue this moving forward and the three things that, you know, could be improved. I take and I compile that because chances are if it was parking, all of you said parking. So therefore it's not like I'm gonna say Shelly said parking, Sammy said parking. When I give it over there, I compile that into one document and then give it over to the event coordinator. And maybe you were a signature event and you got fifty thousand dollars and when we went there, our logo was nowhere. That's it. That's really bad. So we want you to look for those type of things. And maybe you're a five thousand dollar event, and our logo wasn't everywhere, but it didn't have to be. So again, it's supposed to be, you know, what you see. You're supposed to be enjoying that event as an attendee. So, but when you look at these authorized use of funds, we didn't change what was here. I just tried to make it very clear on what you could spend the money on. Traditional print advertising placement in publications with circulation in core and emerging markets. That's the key. The circulation has to be in core emerging markets. And, you know, you may come back with, you, you wanted to be in the Pacific Northwest. Okay, well that's a great magazine and it's beautiful, but that's not in core and emerging markets. Um, from there, it's digital placement, same thing. Um, billboards in core emerging markets. The printing of direct mail pieces distributed in advance. This is a hard one. And Carly and I finally, we think we have it all put together on how we can pay for that. Um, because we don't pay for a postage and that sort of thing. But if you provide, if you have a company that's going to provide that, um, direct mail piece and you get that and it's all ready and they send it out for you, have them submit you an invoice for everything that includes that postage. You know what I'm saying? But you can't just bill me to, for, to go buy $40 worth of stamps. When it's a when it's a project there, it's a project basis that they send it out because they're not billing you for stamps, they're billing you to send that out and it's all one thing. So that's why I'm always like, come ask me, I'll tell you how to put that down so that you can be reimbursed for it. That's why I say don't do it on the back end. Um, obviously, radio placement, video placement. Um, radio placement, I'm going to ask for a script. Um, it must include South Walton in the script. Um, video placement must include our logo. So there's some things there that you have to do. Um, when I'm not going to pay for the updates on your website. That's, you have to have a website. It's 2016, you have to have a website, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not going to pay your web graphic designer, whomever it is, 
fifty dollars an hour to go in and change three words every other day. Um, if you don't have a website because you're a brand new event and you need to buy a URL, so you need to buy whatever the URL is, we will reimburse you for that, and we would reimburse you, say, if you needed to host that on, say, a right space or somewhere. But that's the only hard cost association with web that we're going to pay for because that's part of doing business. That's an operating business. Number three, an appearance fee. So an appearance fee may be considered is the celebrity. It's a common household name and the name of the celebrity is used for marketing the event to consumers. Prior approval from Business South Walton Executive Director is mandatory before any reimbursements may be considered. Um, the amount obviously can't exceed more than the grant and no expenses for that celebrity will be considered. So, this is a hard one. I'm just going to let you know, it is the absolute hardest one to get reimbursed for. Um, so far, I've been able to reimburse one person as this, Errol Lagasse. Um, that's it. I've been able to do one person. Um, I can't, so if you have um, a wine event, may, maybe if you're some extraordinary winemaker and I, I don't even know, I mean, maybe if Stacy would have brought Robert Mondavi to us, we might could have reimbursed for him because of Mondavi wine. But there's a lot of um, things that go into that. And it's an appearance fee. It's not his plane ticket. It's not where he's staying. It's not all that. Now, if you want to roll that into whatever your appearance fee is and have that take care of all of that, that's fine. You can't submit me a $25,000 appearance fee and then submit his stay at the Pearl and his dinner at Fish. And, and it's case by case. And every case is looked at completely separate, completely different. Um, what might work for one event might not work for the other event. Um, I'll tell you, and if Jennifer was here, she would tell you too, South Walton Fashion Week is trying really hard to get some celebrities. I can't take the fourth runner-up on season three of Project Runway as a celebrity. I mean, while maybe in the Project Runway world, and I watched Project Runway, I knew who they were, but that's not, that's not a celebrity. A celebrity is someone that lends their name and people are going to come based upon that. People are going to come to taste the race based upon the opportunity that it's an Emerald of Aussie Foundation event. Okay, so when you so when you say that, if you'll notice, anytime somebody talks about taste the race, it's presented by Emerald of Aussie because if they want to be reimbursed for that marketing, they have to use Emerald of Aussie in all of their marketing. So back to if 30A Wine Festival wanted to have Bobby Flay in, it's the 30A Wine Festival featuring Bobby Flay. Every piece of marketing that they do is the 30 Day Wine Festival featuring Bobby Flay. Now Bobby Flay is a legitimate marketing um, portion of that and his, and his appearance fee is, can, could be considered for reimbursement. So it is a case-by-case -case basis. I have to take it to the executive director. It, I have to do research. Carly has to do research to explain to. There's a lot of hoops to go through, but I mean, if you don't know, you don't know unless you ask. So I'd rather you come and ask and figure it and we'll do it. And it's still reimbursement. You have to pay the celebrity and you have to show us a canceled check for however many, whatever it is you pay, just like you would have to do for a placement in Atlanta Magazine. Now, say like with Emma Lagasse, if he wants to donate that money right back to you, that's his deal. But you have to show us where you pay him so that we can pay you. Those are, that's the biggest thing. Um, Biggest one this year, moving forward, design services. I'm not, we are no longer, that's number seven, design service fees. I will, the South Walton will no longer pay Harley's design service to create your ads. It, it's not, it, if you're working with, um, say, uh, Kevin Boyle or Truman creating all of your ads, that's not reimbursable. That's operating costs, it's the cost of doing business. We're only paying for a placement. Before, it was kind of a gray area, and it could back and forth, kind of, maybe. Um, no, it will not be paid for, it will be kicked back. 
Um, I do want to jump back for just a minute and talk about social ads um, on through Facebook. Um, those are acceptable, but remember it must contain a picture of what you're talking about. It must have our logo and you must geo-target demographics outside of the Oklahoma Bay and Walton County. So you can't just put up a sponsor post that says visit South Walton and, it, and it's now a reimbursable. It's not. So you've got to have that stuff that goes with it. Um, those are the biggest things on that. Um, moving forward, that's page, page five criteria. So part three. part three, this is actually the biggest portion that has changed. So your evaluation form this year will look different than the evaluation form has in the past. So um, the total point scale. Um, the, that is something that we're using that will say, um, that tells you know how much money they could be awarded, and that's something for the executive director, that's for their purview. Um, the commitment to the expansion of the shoulder season, that's a staff evaluation. Um, we, we're not asking you to evaluate their um, marketing plan and all of that. We want them to have one. But it's hard. We we realized that it was hard for you to do that, and um, this will be filled in for you. We, we've had a lot of um, people decide when shoulder season was and when shoulder season wasn't. Even you get 20 points of your events in January. You get zero points of your events in June. It doesn't matter if you have the greatest event ever in June. You're still getting zero points for it not being in the shoulder season. So that is something that we will take care of. Staff evaluation also is the proven overnight guest attendance. That's something that we have to work with the event to do. You don't know if 45% of the ticket sales are tied to lodging through reports. Those are reports that are given to us. So based on the feedback that you all gave us, then we decided that that was staff evaluation. Um, Long-standing funded events, and this is kind of goes back and forth, and I'm not gonna lie, with new executive director, um, this, this could potentially change a little bit, but where we stand now, um, we would we would like to see some of these events that we've been funding for a long time, say a Seaside Half Marathon that sells out in two hours, not ask for $50,000 because obviously if you can sell it out in um, two hours, maybe you don't need as much money. Where we would like to see maybe a newer event, which is like a the local palette, so well beaches wine and food fest are so well be South Walton Beaches Food Festival, Food Film Festival, maybe they should ask for more money. So we want kind of want to look at that. <coughs> so for you guys, um, what we're looking at is we want you to for committee evaluation, um, they they should include a marketing plan with their stuff. We want you to look at it. We want you to look at these ads. We want you to look at it. Are they including South Walton as part of these ads they want to put together? Um, we, we want you guys to look at that in the application process and you know, you know, really look at it and see who wants to be a part of South Walton and if they're trying to get that together. Um, so another thing is for you guys to look at is are, is it playing? Is the soundness of the, the event is it playing? Do they have other um, so if it's an event that maybe isn't at, hosted at an Alice Beach or watercolor or something like that, do they have other people that are willing to back them? Um, do they have um, do they have the organization? Just the resources and everything to get that done. And then for staff will also go in and evaluate um, what the overall potential to impact tourism. So. That is more along the lines of what kind of event it is. So, again, it's an experience event, it's a signature event, and that's a staff evaluation. So, what we're really looking at from you guys is when you attend this event, um, number one, when you walked in, did you know everyone? When you, I mean, you, you know how that is when you walk into that event and you're like, oh, there's my people, there's my people, there's my people. So, you're looking for those, those unfamiliar faces. That's a good thing to look for when you attend these events. Um, now, another thing is, is um, does it seem to be well run? Does it seem to be, when you're looking at, you know, proposed, soundness of the proposed event and the 
it doesn't seem real want real well run where all the trash cans overflowing you know some of those things as event planners that you know maybe got overlooked or whatever those are the things that we're looking for you to give back and feedback so this is where it changes just a little bit and it will be very defined when I send out the applications for you guys to look at um, beyond that pretty much the administration stays the same with the exception of um, where we talked about earlier about reimbursement um, just I just want to repeat that the application is out on the street right now and it closes April 7th our next meeting is April 21st where we will you will rank these events but Kelly I would like you to explain to them the process um, of, of sending the uh, information to them ahead of time and what you expect them to do ahead of time before this 21st meeting so what I'm going to do um, what well, we'll receive the applications on April 7th but um, I have time I'll put together I'm gonna let you know about it as well but the applications they go to you all you'll receive a, a full book of applications and you have to pick them up when i tell you to pick them up because you can't tell me you read 30 applications in two days and it's hard <laughs> it's, it's hard to do this digitally you know to send it to you so that's why she has to make the copies of these and applications i, I want to do it digitally the problem doing it digitally is um they submit so if you're um last year say your last year 38 um 30th songwriters festival you have all this collateral and stuff that you created for the 2015 event or 2016 event that you want to submit as well to show that you know you're going to continue this and you're going to do this and really show how the event's growing that doesn't work very well digitally you want to be able to feel that touch that hold that you know maybe it's t-shirts maybe maybe it's just different things that you want to do so I'm not gonna lie you do get about a five inch binder and I honestly do expect you to read it I have to read it you should too <laughs> someone else should fill my thing <laughs> but um, I just ask you really to look at the event you know if you've attended the event I ask you to put down what your what your thoughts are at the event I ask you to read them all however I will assign certain events to certain people and that they are the ones that will lead the discussion on that event so obviously I'm going to look at where you work what you do and um, pick events that aren't part of Shelby I'm not going to give you Mount Film on tour Kelly I'm not going to give you one of your events you know so uh, and there's uh, there'll also be some uh, some things when we score things that I'll ask some of you to step back obviously you can't for your own event so there'll be some things like that but that will go to you I will be here to answer questions at any point um, there there's also an option in there that if it's a brand new event and maybe everything wasn't explained we can always bring those people in if you wanted to talk to them so there's that's also an option too maybe it's not something that we could do so from the 7th to the 21st that we'll look at that and if there's something that you if want more clarification on then we can have them there on the 21st so there, there's some steps there but i will send you um i'll ask that you come pick up your book and get it put together um i do ask that you know you sign for the book so that you know make sure that you got it so that you know that you read it and um again it, it it's been, in the past we've had anywhere from 20 to 30 applications so um it, I work really hard to make sure that I don't expect everyone to know everything about 30 applications that's why I pick you know some that you know you should be able to leave the discussion on so that's kind of how that would work so when we get here on the 21st you may have already taken your score sheet you have a score sheet I don't have okay here. the big score sheet you may have already scored that at home as you review these applications you may get here uh, and we'll give you a clean one because as the discussion goes on we'll go one by one by one as that discussion goes on at that event you might change your mind on something that you did not think of and you want to change your score and that's perfectly fine and, and that's the other reason that we ask you to attend the event because you know maybe in maybe it wasn't exactly clear in the application but you know Allison attended the event and she's like no they had great signage and parking was so easy and some of that other stuff which really helps with you know what kind of project it's going to be and you know that obviously if they had great signage and you could park places and they didn't run out of food then 
obviously they know what they're doing when they're claiming an event. So that could, but it's not going to say that kind of stuff in the application. You're just going to assume that you know they're not going to run out of food. But it's just some things like that that give you an opportunity to talk about it and really understand each event. And also, I attend them all and or I do my best to attend them all. Carly and I try to. Yeah. Uh, split that between usually myself, Carly, John, or Pamela because we're the four that are in that work through these programs. Um, one of the four of us are in attendance of one of those pro of, of the events so that we know what's going on. Um, but other staff also attends to give a different perspective, and um, we do um, we do come back and we do talk about that. And um, I'll also be able to give an overview, like. You know, maybe you want to know why ads were created the way they were, how we work together, that sort of thing. I'm happy to give that information. And I'll also have, um, I'll also include all of the um, economic impacts for all the events along with your stuff because I want you to be able to go back and look at, you know, what they did for previous year. So I'll include all of that as well in your packet for your information. And like I said before, and I started out, it's a lot of work, and I realize it's a lot of work for you guys, and I'm so appreciative that you, know, you all want to take the time that you want to do this and you want to be a part of this, because once y'all get finished, then I live it every single day. So um, Carly and I really appreciate everything that you know you all do to take the time out to be a part of this. I have a quick question on the scoring sheets when we're filling those out. Are we only filling out where it says committee evaluation? Yeah, it will, it will point the yeah. rest are yeah. be filled it, in. Yeah, it will, will be filled in. You'll just have your part and then we'll okay. come back and we'll add that to it. So. Okay. And, and on the score sheet, she'll have um, if they received sponsorship dollars the year before, mm -hmm. how many years that event has been in existence. So you'll have some history there. You won't be just cold like, oh, this is event. I, I really don't know anything about it. Yeah, it, it, I'll, it included in everything that's in It's like for the past 10 years, they've received an event sponsorship. They asked for, because now everybody asks for the moon. So it's, they asked for $50,000 last year. They were awarded 10. This year they've asked for 50, whatever it happens to be. But I, I include all of that information in there because I want it to be as broad as it can be so that you can make, you know, a well-informed decision. And each one of us will be reviewing all of the applications. You review all of the applications. However, I do pick like five of them that I ask you to really, you know, that it's I ask you to lead the discussion on so that I'm not stuck talking the whole time. And everybody else gets time to talk. More questions, if I may. So the, the happening like budget is fantastic. What do you do? You only use two plus thirty thousand. But what happens to the remaining dollars that go over the next year? Uh, they just haven't. Those events haven't happened yet. Place. Since those events have it all, we oh, use it all. Okay. Yeah, and it doesn't roll over. What's not used is just gone. There's no rollover. There's nothing um, at September 30th. What hasn't been expended is gone. It's gone. You, you can't ask for it on October 1. I'll tell you now. When we started this program about 15 years ago, maybe 2002, something like that, we had about $75,000, and we helped some events and we helped nurture them. And, um, and then as time went on, we increased that budget, increased that budget, because we realized the value of these events in bringing people to the destination specifically for that event, especially if it's a signature three-day uh, event, and putting those heads in bed. So, you know, the economic value that we uh, give that half million dollars to, to help these events, you know, is, is just increased. And these are the applications that are doing it well. So if I'm a new business to the area, how do I know that these ones are available to me? We advertise in the newspaper, The Sun, The uh, Herald, and then we have The Connection. It's our weekly uh, e-newsletter that we send out on Thursdays, and it's it's in there, too. It's on our industry site. It's southwalton.com slash industry. And then that's the other thing that we ask you all to do. If you know someone that has an event, or like, you're like, hey, contact me. Yeah, there's dollars out there, contact and hardly contact Kelly. And um, it works really well, you know, um, Carly travels, I travel, so typically one or the other one of us is in the office. Um, we can answer the questions. We, we try not to let people sit and email what's not for days with one of us being gone. So um, we, we have a good support system here at the office and they'll always get you what you need. The application is always available. So, and Carly and I both tell people, it, the application can, it's in your packet. 
it's um, not just, it can be a little overwhelming for anyone who's filled it, never filled it out for the first time. Um, fill it out, come in, talk to me. I can't fill it out for you, but I can, I can help you. I, I can help you, steer you in the direction of the things that you need, the things that will help you. Um, I don't want to say help you get funding because I can't control that, but I can steer you in the direction of the things that will make your case for your funding that you want. You know, obviously if you come in and you don't have one partner that you're partnering with for accommodations, I'm going to try to push you towards, you know, hey, if you talk to these people, then we might need some help. So, yeah, that kind of thing. So anything like that. And again, we don't need any events in June or July. We don't need any more people here. Um, the two weeks uh, in August, at the beginning of August, that kind of takes care of itself. And that's why we gave 10 points for the last two weeks in August, because our bed tax collectors were telling us, hey, our numbers are dropping off, because the kids are going back to school and the moms are get, you know, getting them ready for school. So if there's something that last two weeks of August that somebody uh, wants to create, that would be wonderful. And mm -hmm. as you see each month, especially in the winter months, you get the higher points if you have an activity because that's when we need to head some beds. That's why um, 30 Day Songwriters Festival in January is so wonderful. I don't know how that can get bigger because we only have so many venues that these folks can play at, but it has been a tremendous success. And I also think of, um, you know, people, if people are talking about creative event, maybe you are Alice Beach, maybe you are Water, maybe you are St. Joe, maybe, you know, whatever, you're thinking about creating these events, about some events that we don't have. Obviously, we got some line festivals, we're probably pretty good on those. We got a couple runs, we're probably pretty good on those. I think it's some of that beyond the beach stuff that, you know, it, that ecotourism. ecotourism is great. You know, partnering with some of that, like Chalkatchi Basin Alliance and some of that stuff to really do some beyond the beach stuff. Um, that's what people are interested in. Yes, wine festivals aren't going away. People love them. They, they just do. Food festivals aren't going away. People love them. But, you know, people are in this where I want to be healthier, and that's where, you know, the our demographic is really looking at that. And, you know, think about some of those beyond the beach things. You know, Run South was a really good event this year, and I think that, you know, it could get bigger, and some other things like that could work really hard. But even more things um, like the Endless Summer Concert Series, Carly, you all attended that, and you thought that it was, you know, it was really interesting the way they did that. Um, Even with the weather, it seemed like they had a great turnout. So there, there are, some, so thinking outside of the box really gets some creative things going. And it's, like I said, especially if you are Alice Beach, you are St. Joe, you are St. Dustin, you know, thinking outside of that really, and it doesn't have to be a big festival, it doesn't have to be three days, it can be the St. Dustin Gumbo Festival, like I said. $700,000 for just a couple hours. Now, I know I'm going to make a lot of hours for when it's good, but still, I mean, it's not as something to put on like the wine festival. But you know, think of those kind of things where you can partner with something that's already, you know, maybe has a little bit of a following and go there. And I think our destination, you know, of course people come here for the beach because we absolutely have the best beaches ever, but they also come here. We're, we're known more and more now for our food, our art, our music, and our wine. 65 galleries um, in South Walton alone where you can see art. Excuse me, let me get that. This, this other one. Okay. okay. She's going to go get this other one. This other one. Um, any questions about the application? I know all of you, you know, because all of you are not event planners and you won't be filling out the application, but we just wanted to um, go over those big changes that, that were made for the 2017. Well, moving forward, um, I have not heard from Clay, our, our lawyer, so I'm thinking he's still, let me check one more time, in Fort Walton and is not going to be able to make it. So we will give, yes, Sammy. No, I'm sorry. Is it, I mean, I think you guys covered this before. Is it permissible, like, for me to talk with other committee members about, you know, fill out the applications? No. No. And that's something Clay will go over. But um, if you have a question, come, come to me or Kelly about the application. You can, you can discuss it while we're in, while we're in. Yes, we can discuss it here as, as a body. And are we allowed to mail or to email out this application to people? Yes, you can email that application out. Um, and 
Clay will go over this too, but like when we email you something um, and you want to respond with a question or a comment, just push reply, not reply all, because we do not want everyone else to see what you asked or what your comment was. Um, so just remember, just, just push reply to me, you know, or if it's to Kelly or Alicia is, is my person that sends out most of the communication here. Kelly will be sending out the, um, uh, the information about the application and what days you can pick it up. And normally, she'll have it ready in the visitor center with a packet with your name on it, and then you'll, you'll sign. Visitor center's open seven days a week, 8 to 4.30, so you can even come on weekends if you can't make it uh, during the week. Just make sure that you give yourself enough time to go, big, go through that big stack of applications, because there's normally, I think she said 20 to 30, and it is pretty time consuming. What's the maximum number The maximum money? Uh, 50,000. Good for you. I don't, what's the max that we've ever given a signature event is 50. 50. Who was that? Do you I mean, I mean, offhand, just the time. It's all right. It's received 50 several years in a row. So Arts Quest. Arts Quest? Arts Quest isn't received 50,000 oh, dollars. Okay. They're, they're a little lower than that. There are, there are rooms are a little bit harder to prove um, just because of the because it's not a ticketed event their ticket sales are a little bit harder we already have all that stuff in time and it's going to do that later or it is like that too um, but you can show them the southern the southern living stuff okay. yeah. this is um, Kelly's passing out the southern living insert um, that we are a part of that will appear in the Southern Living yeah, Magazine yeah. and then we ordered uh, I don't know how many copies of this that we can give away at out of market events. You're welcome. And it's a real honor for South Walton to be asked by Southern Living to participate in this. Yeah. So this, yeah, this is our anniversary um, our 50th anniversary edition. And you may have received this in the mail to get Southern Living. Yeah. But we have a, a nice um, a nice spread in there. So if there's no more questions about the application, I'm, uh, Clay's not coming, so I'm going to give you my updates. Um, yeah, you can pass this out for me. Those of you who uh, were at the last committee meeting, we gave you an annual report, if you will recall. Um, Carly, can you pass out the annual report over there? This is, um, yeah, the copies there. This is the annual, 2015 annual report um, by department. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so this is a good snapshot for you to see uh, what this organization does on a yearly basis. In addition, I wanted to call your attention uh, the um, 2015 snapshot annual report. If you look at the very top, and it talks about direct economic impact annually to Walton County, that is two billion eight hundred million. I just find that incredible that tourism in Walton County generates that, and we we should feel so lucky. We have about sixty five thousand. Uh, permanent residents in, in South Walton or in Walton County and Walton County is a thousand square miles it employs about 25,000 out of that 65,000 in tourism so it creates a lot of jobs over on the upper right hand corner uh, for our beach our beach maintenance our beach operations in 2015 they collected 600 tons of trash on the beach. That does not mean that they walked the beach and picked up the trash. The visitors that we have come to South Walton do a very good job of picking up their own trash and then taking it to the receptacles that are along our 26 miles of beach. And if the receptacle happens to be full, they just place it at the base of that of, of that garbage area. But the fact that you know they picked up that much is is incredible. We have a team of about. Uh, 18 beach crew that works 365 days a week out on the beach. 
Also, the turtle nesting. I know, Janine, you were talking to me earlier about the turtles. So we had um, 78 sea turtle nests that hatched. And I mentioned that out of every 10,000 turtles hatched, only about one made it to maturity. So that's, uh, yes, for every 10,000 turtles hatched, and there's, so there's lots of factors. They may not make it to the water. They may, if there's a light uh, um, behind them, they'll go to that light, or they might get eaten by a fish or a, you know, something. So yeah, that's, this is a really great program, and that, that's made through October is the sea turtle nesting time. Um, down on the bottom left, sometimes residents say that the TDC is lax in spending bed tax dollars to improve the destination. But if you look here, 8.3 million, that was spent on parking, bike paths, beach boardwalks, signs, bathrooms, beach safety, and more. So out of our $20 million budget, 8.3 was spent to do those things. And as a resident, I feel very thankful that you know we have over 66 public beach accesses that I can choose to go down and you know get to the beach. A lot of places in Florida, unless you are renting on the beach or you own on the beach, it's very difficult to get them to the beach. So we're, we're very, very lucky in that regard. Um, on the back, the visitors, upper uh, left-hand corner, we have approximately 3.2 annual visitors a year to South Walton. Of course, I know everybody thinks it's in the summer that those 3.2 million visitors come, but it's really not. It's spread out through the whole year. And we actually don't do any marketing for the, uh, for the summer season because, again, it takes care of itself. So the marketing that we do is focused around the shoulder and the winter season in trying to, to create a year-round destination. And you can see that we've won lots of awards, 27 awards through marketing, sales. And then our website visitors, uh, that's, a, that's a large number too. The YouTube, uh, our advertising value equivalency, $32 million on top of what we spent. And then at the very top is the emerging markets, the trade shows and the takeovers that we participated in in, in 2015. So, you know, I, I just want you to you like that? Yeah, it's a great piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just wanted you to see that and know that, you know, what we do, what we all do collectively makes a difference in the overall um, strong economic growth of, of Walton County. Also, if Harley could pass out, this is hot off the press. This is our new visitor guide. And you can see that we have the uh, trees at Western Lake here, and this is just kind of a new, a new photograph for us. Usually we show, usually we're on shore looking at the beach in the distance, but we, our ad agency gave us, I think, three different um, photos to pick from this year for the cover, and we staff overwhelmingly love this picture because it was a, it was a whole new perspective of the beach, and I hope you guys like it too. So this is hot off the press, and in that box over there, um, if you want a few more copies to take with you, just get that on the way out. Also, we have uh, Perfect in South Walton. I know some of you have received this already, but the new folks may have, may not, and I think that's over there too. Oh, you gave it to them? And this is uh, the second year that we have done this Perfect in South Walton. We do nominations. And then we do the awards at our annual meeting, which takes place in October every year. So it's the best of the best. And so if you're in here, you are just wonderful. And I know several of you, several of you are in here. Um, also, this Coastal Dune Lake video card is going to give you each one of these. This um, was produced by Elon Stolfus. He is an award-winning uh, director in cinema photography. He does a lot of things in Florida. And you know how wonderful and rare our coastal dune lakes are. We have 15 of them. And they are only found here, Madagascar, and Australia. 
And I thought I knew everything about the Coastal Dunlays because, you know, I've lived for almost 40 years, so I just thought I just knew everything. This is an hour-long video that he produced, and when I watched this, it really brought tears to my eyes because these are even more special than I even knew. And so we have um, purchased 15,000 copies of these from uh, Elam, and we are putting these in every unit at every bed tax collector. So if you've not picked yours up, let us know <coughs> how many you need, and you can put these in your uh, units. Or um, if you don't have DVD players in the units, you can run this on a loop. And I think at the TDC meeting this week, um, the Hilton is actually streaming this uh, into their TVs, into their rooms. I don't know how they do that, but they don't have um, they don't have DVD players <coughs> already. So it's like they, you know, like your your channel, your hotel channel. Your hotel yeah. channel. So it's so that's cool. something the Pearl could do if they were interested yeah. in yeah. not having, you know. So this is, you know, this is a really great piece and Shelby if you would like a few extra copies for your sales folks to yeah, you know great. when they go out of market and do presentations I know it's an hour but they don't have to watch the whole hour thing but it I can't say enough about this it is it is incredible uh, we also have this our new little cookbook from the uh, best of the chefs in South Walton so if you'd like to we've got extra copies over there for you too um, this is we're having a public design workshop on February 16th and February 17th at the South Baltimore Annex from 4 to 8 we hired a consulting firm and they will take um, ideas and comments from the audience from the residents and this is for South Walton for signage for um, roadways Lots of different components will be discussed at this. So this is your opportunity to say what you like and what you don't like about, you know, 38, Sydney Golf Drive, 98, 331. And then they will, after those the, the two-day um, uh, workshop, they will take that information back and study that and then give us a comprehensive uh, report. So. You know, anybody that you work with and think would be interested in attending that, we encourage you to attend. I did want to mention that we are hiring a new information specialist in the visitor center. That application is live on the Walton County website. It does require uh, weekends and some holidays, but it is a full-time position with benefits. So if you know a rock star that is looking for a job and doesn't mind working weekends, um, send them to that website and uh, have them fill out that application and they'll be working with me and the visitor center team. Also wanted to give you an update on our executive director position. You know, our former executive director left um, uh, after our annual meeting in October, and so that seat has been empty. They did receive 30 applications for people who were interested in that position. Yesterday, a committee of seven interviewed four of those applicants, and um, there'll be other timelines and processes to go with that. But eventually, um, the final candidates will be interviewed by the Board of County Commissioners, and then they will make the final selection. So that's still probably several weeks off um, till we have a new executive director. I think that is it, unless uh, committee comments. Anybody has any questions, comments, ideas? They've had enough of us. <laughs> um, public comments. <laughs> no? Okay, with that being said, our next meeting is April 21st, where we will rank, which you'll get all that information ahead of time. And uh, we will see you then, and we will adjourn. And thank you for your time. I know it's, uh, it's a lot to do out of your day this is the coffee table book that southern living produced um, all the little tabs in here is all where south walton has talked about in their 50 years so if you wanted to look at this um you know that is broad john if you'll be in his office can we make a motion to adjourn please so moved so moved
Oh, second. You can't say it's second. I can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. All the things. Alicia, I'm here. 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 I'm here.